If you wanted to make an adult human from scratch, one that would be indistinguishable from you or from me, giving it memories like the replicants get in the classic sci-fi film Blade Runner would probably be a good bet. But that posits that you can just tell someone something fictional about their past and they will take it as their own past. Can you implant memories in people? We learn about Replicant's implanted memories from this scene between Deckard and Rachel. Trying to prove she's not lab made and that she has a real life history, she starts describing a childhood memory. But Deckard knows the memory by heart because he's heard it from replicants before. It proves she's a replicant, implying that the scientists of 2019 can implant entire memories that never happened. Now, implanting memories implies that the memories being inserted are false or at least never happened to the person being inceptioned. We aren't told how this is accomplished, but the simplest option would be to simply tell the replicants about their own life history, even if it's false, as they matured in some fleshy bio bag or whatever. And that process is simple enough for us to test. Let's get out of this ring. Okay, okay, okay. Now time is a factor here, so please pay attention. You're a kid, you're lost in the mall, you were so scared you couldn't find your parents, an elderly man has to take you back to the manager. Can you see the details? Now, there's a chance that you never got lost in the mall as a kid. There's a chance that you did, and there's a chance that you never got lost in a mall as a kid, but you just remembered some of the details of it anyway. I may have just implanted a false memory in you because it's that easy. Also, sorry. In 1995, researchers Elizabeth Loftus and Jacques Piquerel published a now seminal study deemed the Lost in the Mall study. In it, they asked 24 participants to come in and recall their childhoods, but they asked their family members for their childhoods first. Researchers then presented study participants with four memories, three real and one fake, getting lost in a mall as a kid. And they asked them to recall all the details that they could about these memories. A week later, they asked them back into the study arena and told them that one of the memories was fake. But 20% of the participants took getting lost in a mall as their own life history, even though it happened, according to their families, to none of them. And in recent years, researchers using the lost in a mall method have been able to push the percentage of participants taking false memories as their own up to 40 and even 50%. This is implanting a false memory in someone like a spider living outside of your window and scientists have found that even a single word can do it. Since Loftus' pioneering research, hundreds of studies have been able to have been able to confirm that implanting false memories is surprisingly easy. One study found that if you ask participants at what speed two cars impacted each other in a video they just saw, they will report lower speeds if you say, oh, at what speed were the cars going when he hit each other? And they will report higher speeds if you ask them at what speed the cars smashed into each other. This is just changing a single word. And the people who heard smashed were more likely to report broken glass at a stage scene that never existed. We have to get out of this rain, it's ridiculous. But false memories of broken glass or of cars moving at different speeds aren't gonna change anyone's life history very much as much as a replicant's life history would have to change. But researchers have been able to use this same memory implantation technique to implant memories that are a bit more traumatic. In 1995, using the same lost in the mall technique, they were able to convince some percentage of participants that they had once been hospitalized, even though they never had been. In 1996, they were able to convince people that they had an accident at a family wedding. And it was super embarrassing, Laura. In 1999, they were able to convince some percentage of people that they remember being the victims of a vicious animal attack, which you think you would remember. And in 2001, they were able to convince some people in a study that they had once almost drowned and had to be saved by a lifeguard. 
You think you'd remember that too. Across all studies, we found that around 31% of people are receptive to memory implantation. Once we understood the relative ease of memory manipulation, we started seeing cultural consequences. For example, enhance. You may be one of the many people, like myself, who always thought that the Berenstain Bears were the Berenstain Bears, uh, but they weren't, or enhance. Like myself again, you may have thought that Sinbad made a genie movie. Nope, he didn't. These are just collective false memories that are now spread and shared on the internet, implanting their falseness into more and more people. These aren't truths from another dimension. That's stupid. We were just mistaken. This so-called Mandela effect is pretty harmless, but realizing how easily false memories can make it into our minds has forced us to change society. The percentages and details vary, but decades of research have shown two things pr like tears. Decades of research has shown two things pretty definitively. First, that the power of suggestion can create false memories, even rich false memories with a lot of detail. And second, being confident in your memory does not mean that that memory is true. Why is the future so wet? like my owl. Since we've started probing the mechanics of memory manipulation, we've learned that remembering isn't like watching video footage. Instead, it's like putting together the pieces of a puzzle, but your brain will use any puzzle piece it has to complete that puzzle. And so we've had to change society in radical ways. We now do not accept eyewitness testimony in court as reliable on its own. And we have proof that there's no good evidence we repress memories, even traumatic ones. Instead, we take the suggestions sometimes of authority figures and craft strong memories around them, which in turn helps make us who we are. Sound familiar? So, can you implant memories into people like Blade Runner does with its replicants? Yes. Decades of research has shown that if the replicant Rachel was given some suggestion about her childhood by an authority figure like Tyrell, even false suggestions, there's a good chance that she would take those memories into her own life history. As Elizabeth Loftus writes, we seem to reinvent our memories, and in doing so, we become the people of our own imagination. We make memories what they are by being who we are and what we believe. It's part of being human. And in that way, replicants would be more human than human, wouldn't they? Because science. Here's, uh, here's Ryan Gosling um, encountering an enemy in Blade Runner. Here's him encountering a love interest in Blade Runner. Here's him discovering evidence in Blade Runner. Here's him running for his life in Blade Runner. <laughs> Nothing going on up here. Thank you so much for watching, Amanda. If you want even more silliness, check out Musk Watch with my colleague Dan Case. And if you want even more science that's a bit more premium, check out ProjectAlpha.com and the Space Program, where if you sign up now for Alpha, you can get this show two days before everyone else and lord it over them. Thanks.